today, pot roast. So this is just a standard chuck roast, and I'm gonna do it in the crock pot. First thing I wanna do is season it really well. So I'm gonna do both sides with salt, black pepper, and of course my garlic powder from Lowry's that I really, really like this Lowry's garlic powder. Um, my mother-in-law turned me on to this all the way from South Africa. She asked me to pick her up some and I'd never heard of it. By golly, we had it. I don't know why I've never used it, it's awesome. So I did that side. I'm just gonna flip it over and do the other side now. Grab a wet towel to wipe my hands off with. Don't wanna get all that juice and stuff all over my shakers, it's kinda nasty. Be generous with this. This meat's gonna go through quite a lot of cooking process and you're gonna lose some of the seasoning, but you're also gonna be throwing in a lot of other stuff with it that's gonna need seasoned as well. So don't be afraid to season it pretty generously. Ugh, anybody else out there love garlic? I just love garlic. Okay, next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to sear this in a cast iron skillet, so I'm going to go ahead and get my pan hot. I'm working in my uh, home kitchen today. It's, unfortunately, we're not able to full-time RV yet because my husband still works, which we're grateful for that job, of course. But we have to come home so he can go to work. And uh, so I'll do some of these recipes in my home kitchen, but... I just want you to know that the majority of the recipes that I will be making can totally be done in your camper cook uh, kitchen. And uh, this could be done either in a crock pot or in, um, or in an instant pot, whichever one you prefer. Instant pot doubles as a crock pot too. You just have to change out the lid. Um, the other thing I would say about that is if you're going to do it in the Instant Pot, I'd highly recommend that you, um, sorry, can't talk and do this at the same time. I would highly recommend that if you do it in the Instant Pot to cut this up into bite-sized bits because you don't, you don't want this to be too crowded in your Instant Pot. You can also saute this beforehand in your instant pot if you're cooking it in there so that you don't have to do it in a cast iron or in a skillet on the stove before you put it into your um, crock pot. If you have any questions about your specific case, post them below and I'll answer them to the best of my ability. Okay, I got my pan nice and hot. Just did the sizzle test. Remember, hot pan, cold oil, food doesn't stick. Turn this vent down a little bit. It's a screaming hot pan. Remember when we want to sear food, we want that really hot pan. So this is just a little bit of vegetable oil. You could use canola oil or olive oil, whatever oil you want to use. And you'll see it's already dancing and waving at me, so it's ready to go. Get these tongs. Get this put in here and get it seared up. I might, might should have used my bigger skillet, but we'll make this one work. Yeah, it's gonna be a little too big. That's all right. We'll make it fit, as they say. Grab a hot pad here. Nice hot pan. We just want to brown it. Now, the reason why we're doing this is we're developing the flavors, right? We're going to start building flavors as we put this in the crock pot. We're going to build flavors, and this is just part of that process. Um, you get that nice sear on the meat. That also helps to retain the juices within the meat. So even if you're cutting this up into chunks, you want to go ahead and brown off your chunks. The reason why I put flour in it is because that flour is actually going to help to thicken your sauce. So at the end of it, if it's not as thick as you want it, you can add some cornstarch. That will help to thicken it up. But for now, we're just going to start with a little bit of flour. And uh, if we need more later, then we can definitely fix that with cornstarch. 
Like I said, we're not trying to cook this. We're just trying to get a nice sear on the meat. Okay, let's try to get this flipped over. Oh yeah, yum. Oh, that looks nice, guys. Great, so we're gonna do that to the other side and then we're gonna transfer it over to our crock pot. So while that's happening, let me take you over and show you what's going on in the crock pot. So my crock pot's already good and hot. We've got some olive oil in there. I'm working on chopping up the vegetables. So this is a, about a medium onion. I've just chopped into bite-sized pieces. This is a real rustic dish, so don't worry about how everything looks. The celery, use the celery tops. There's lots of great flavor in those celery tops, and they'll just melt away into the juice in your roast. So go ahead and use those. Okay, so again, just rough chop on these. I'm gonna chop the ends off. And then I'm doing just, you know, bite-sized pieces. You don't want to do them too small because you want them to stand up to the amount of time that you're going to be cooking these. And mushrooms. I have about a half a container of mushrooms left from another recipe. Now for the flavor. I got a couple things to flavor with. This is better than bouillon roasted garlic concentrate. <laughs> oh yeah, boy, I'm telling you. I got this at Kroger. Shout out to Pressure Luck for the recommendation for this stuff. Oh my gosh, it's wonderful. So rather than put whole garlic in here, I'm gonna put some of this in. And I'm gonna do just a, a good heaping tablespoon. I'm just gonna drizzle that around over the vegetables. Woo. Oh, smells so good. So it's basically just roasted garlic cloves pulverized. I think. Beef, beef broth concentrate. I'm gonna give, oh, let's say a half a tablespoon of that, not a ton. And then I'm gonna throw in some water. Now this is two cups of water. I may not use all of it, but I want to make sure that I've got enough liquid in there. Rinse the spoon off, get all that deliciousness off of there. There, it's just starting to kind of come to the top of the vegetables. I don't want it to actually, <laughs> you know I can't waste that goodness, okay. I don't want it to actually cover the vegetables because I don't really want my meat sitting in it. Eventually it will, but I want my meat kind of sitting on top of it. Um, you can take your spoon and mix that around too if you want. Oh, it already smells divine. Okay, okay guys, let's add the meat. Okay, now I'm gonna add my meat back into the pot. Oh my goodness, it's beautiful. Set that right in there, get it all tucked in for a long winter's nap. And you know what? I'm throwing this in the pan. Why not? Oh my gosh, look at that gorgeous yumminess. Okay. And like I said, that flour that's in there is going to help to thicken the sauce. Get that spread out, tucked down in the nooks and crannies. Oh, yum. Okay. Guys, that's it. Set it and forget it. I've got this on high because it's about two o'clock now and I want this for dinner tonight. So, um, oh, I was going to throw some potatoes in here. Hold on. Hold the phone. I forgot my potatoes. Let's tuck these potatoes down around the that one's too big. I'm gonna just get some small ones. Some small potatoes. Small potatoes. Down underneath it. Oh yeah, okay. That's it guys. Okay, so there's my roast. We'll check back on it later and see how it's doing. I'm gonna clean this mess up. See you later. 
Okay, it's been about five hours. I'm gonna pull this roast out. Let's pull this out and see what we have. It's gonna fall apart, so I'm just gonna take it out in chunks. Oh yeah, try not to get this all over me. Okay, there's the first chunk. Ooh, sizzle, sizzle. There you go. Okay, and then I think the rest of the stuff in here is veggies, so I'm gonna pull those out. My little potatoes. Those will be tasty. Those will be my husband's favorite, I'm sure. I'm just gonna pull the veggies out and put them around. Okay, I think I got about all of it out. There's a couple little stray carrots left. Let's make a little pan sauce, pan, pan gravy. I'm just gonna get a little pan. I'm gonna get a ladle and put some juice in here. That's enough. It's just a couple people here, so. So for my gravy, I've got a little bit of water in here. I'm gonna just put in a couple teaspoons of cornstarch, and I'm just gonna mix that up. Okay, so now what I wanna do is I wanna get the heat on this. And I'm gonna bring this to a boil. Now, the secret to making a sauce like this is to use a whisk because if you don't use a whisk, you're gonna have lumps. Okay, that's pretty good. Okay, so you start whisking and then slowly pour this in a little bit at a time. Making a sloppy mess here, but that's all right. Probably won't use all of this cornstarch. You just want enough just until it starts to get thick for you. There you go. There you go. There's your gravy. Okay, guys, I'm going to serve this up. I'm going to feed my husband. Thanks again for watching. Hit that subscribe button. If you like the content, please let me know. Either a comment below or hit the like button. And uh, if you want to see me make a recipe or you've got a question on how to make something, let me know. I want to try new stuff too. I'll see you guys next time.